Welcome to the Pop Fizz course on making a boat race. In this lesson, in this video, we will be building our boat. So let me show you a demo for what it is that we will be building today. Okay, here you see I have three boats. This is a very basic boat here to my left, slightly more impressive boat to my right, made out of wood with little flame engines, and then another boat here made out of gold metal with a sparkle or actually a particle emitter effect and a glow added to make a more realistic looking engine. This uses the vehicle seat tool or part that Roblox gives us and this this vehicle seat allows us to move our boat forwards and backwards and also to turn it okay so in this lesson like i said we'll be building a very basic boat and then in the next lesson we will learn how to make it more complex okay. so let me go ahead and start roblox studio Okay, and actually let me go ahead and close that. Okay, go to Roblox Studio, go to New, and open a base plate template. Okay, first thing we will do is delete the base plate. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we need to build, we need to add some water. So we're just going to use the terrain editor to add a very simple region of water. So open the terrain editor, go over to the region menu and press the select tool. Okay. Now drag here close to your spawn location and then zoom out, zoom out quite a bit. And actually I'm going to move my camera a little bit. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to make this as big as it will go on the sides. And there's actually a limit. Um, I'm not sure if there's a setting for this, but there is a limit to how big we can make this region. And I'm just going to make it that big. Now, in a future lesson, we will be making this. We will be, we will be using the terrain editor to make our race course. And we will be making more than one region for that. But for now just to get this working <clears throat> yeah that's as big as roblox will make let me make this region i will make it a little deeper okay and now what we can do is fill it with water so go ahead and press on the fill tool select water as our material and press fill okay and then the, what i want to do is i want to press the move button and I want to move this so that the spawn location is on top. And that looks pretty good. And we can go ahead and make sure this is at the right location by pressing on the spawn location in the Explorer window and then pressing F that will focus on that. And it does. Oh yeah. For some reason, uh, focus doesn't work very well when the terrain editor is on. Not really sure why. Maybe if I just turn this off, let me try that again. Yeah, yeah. So for some reason, if you have one of these tools selected, focus doesn't work, but we don't need this anymore. So we are good. And let's check and see how this did. Um, it almost put it in the right spot and we can easily just move this down. But let's make sure spawn select spawn location is selected. And just put it right on the surface. OK, that looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this spawn location look a little better. I'm going to delete the decal. So I'm going to delete that. And then on the spawn location, I'm going to make it a wood plank material. 
and I'm going to change the color to some kind of brown. Let's see. That looks good. Okay, so let me move my camera a little bit. Okay, and we're ready to go ahead and make this boat. So this is going to be a very simple boat for this lesson. And like I said, in the next lesson, we will improve it. So we need a part. So we are in the home menu. Click on part, add a block, and put it at sea level. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to move it over here to this side and this way. And I'm going to make it out of the same material. This is going to be a little wooden plank, basically. Okay, so let me uh, call this boat floor because this is what we're going to use to build the rest of our boat. Okay, and let me see. I want to change the size. A good size for this would be 6112. Let me try that. Actually, I guess, yeah, that, that's fine. Let me put this over here, though. Again, these numbers for the size will change depending on how, um, what your camera view is. And the next thing I need is I need a vehicle seat. So let me go ahead and turn my, let me go ahead and turn my camera. And let me add a vehicle seat. So the way I do it here is I just click on workspace, click on this little plus sign, and I type in seat. And it will give you two options. You will have a regular seat and a vehicle seat. Now the regular, the regular seat um, will allow you to have passengers on your boat. So you could add multiple, you could make this a really big boat and have passenger seats. But the vehicle seat is what actually allows us to steer our boat. And we actually use this vehicle seat for other things like making steerable, other kinds of steerable vehicles, like a car or a train. Okay, so go ahead and insert that and then select it and place it right on top of the right on top of the boat floor. And in order to get a better look, I'm going to go ahead and click on the top button here on the view selector. And I'm going to center my plank and I can see my boat floor. I can see that it was not centered. Okay, now it is. Now I can move my camera back. Okay, this is looking better. Now what we want to do is we want to add a few things to this. Uh, but first, let me go ahead and group this together because we want to group all of this into one model. So I'm going to use control and left click to select both of my vehicle seat and the boat floor. And then I'm going to group them by pressing the group button right here. Then I'm going to rename this to boat. And we're, we're ready to add a few more things. Let me, let me center this. Okay. So to the vehicle seat, I want to add a script. We will be adding a slight amount of code, just a few lines. And then to the boat floor, I want to add three things. And I'm just going to use this little plus to add them. So I'm going to make sure, click on boat floor, click on the little plus. And then we're going to add three things. We're going to add an angular velocity. And as soon as you type, start to type angular velocity, you can just click on the uh, autocomplete. We're going to add a body force. So I'm just type in body and select body force. And then we're going to add an attachment. Okay. Now the body force is what makes the boat go forwards and backwards. And the angular velocity is what makes the boat turn. Now we need to change a couple of settings on angular velocity. So click on angular velocity. The first thing we need to do is click on attachment here and just select the attachment that we added to boat floor. The other thing we need to do is make the max torque a large number. I'm just going to choose 10,000. And that just means how strong the steering is. If that was zero, this w changing the um, or pressing any buttons wouldn't really steer our boat. Okay, so just make it 10,000, press enter. And this is actually all that we need to do. Oh, the only the thing I forgot is we need to weld this vehicle seat to our boat floor, otherwise it'll move around. So go ahead and make sure nothing is selected by clicking on 
uh, the, the water. Go over to your model menu, click on create, weld, then click on the boat floor, and then on the vehicle seat. And now you should see a little green line here that shows that we have connected our two parts and also we see a weld constraint under boat floor. Okay, Make sure that show welds is selected in order for you to see these little green lines. And I always keep these on. I always keep on, I always keep show welds, constraint details, and draw on top. All of them are always turned on. Okay, so we've actually finished everything with this basic boat and we can go ahead and test it. So go ahead and press play. And let's just make sure that nothing is wrong so far. So I just go over and as soon as I get in the seat, I can try pushing the arrow buttons and nothing works. But just to make sure, at least, you know, it's not tipping over and the seat is centered and I can sit on it. Okay, so that looks good. Go ahead and press stop. And now all that we need to do is add a few lines of code into our script. So go ahead and delete print hello world. And let's start with a framework. So we need uh, a few things. We need a function. I'm going to call this, you can call it on changed because we're going to use the changed event. So that makes sense. And this is usually the way you name these things uh, in any, any programming language. You can use autocomplete to make this a little faster. And then let's do one thing here. Let's do, okay, so we need the vehicle seat. And so I have, I have script selected here in the Explorer and you can see that the parent is the vehicle seat. So I would do, or I would type script dot parent. And again, use autocomplete, makes this a lot easier. And the event that we want is right here. You see it has the little lightning bolt, which means it's an event and it's the changed event. So basically anytime we press certain keys on the keyboard, the arrow keys or WASD, this will either steer our boat or make it move forwards and backwards. And so that's the event that we want to tie into. So press that, press enter, colon, and then we use connect. And again, autocomplete makes this really fast. Now inside of connect, we want to tell it which function to call and the function that we're calling is on changed. Okay, so we have our framework, but I'm going to do something a little different here because this gets the, the way I, you can type this is a little messy. So we're going to use something called a variable. And all a variable does for us this time is just prevent us from typing things over and over. And so we want to we want to create three variables. And I'll show you how we do this. It's really easy in Roblox. The first one we want is a variable for the seat. Okay. So normally, here let me show you. So normally, if I wanted to access the vehicle seat, I would have to type script.parent. Whoops. And then by using the dot, I could access any of the properties. So here, if I type on vehicle seat in the explore window, you can see that the material, I could change the material using this, right? And we've learned to do that before in previous lesson. But I don't want to type script.parent. I want something that's a little more descriptive. So I'm going to actually use a variable and I'm going to call it seat and I'm going to set it equal to script.parent parent. Now, anytime that I type seat, it's exactly the same thing as typing script.parent. But seat is a lot more descriptive of what we're actually uh, accessing. And it just saves, saves us time typing. So let's create three, two more of these. So we also want to be able to access the boat, which is right here. And so that one is actually the parent of the parent of the script, right? Because if we click on script, we see that its parent is vehicle seat. If we click on vehicle seat, we see that its parent is the boat. So for the boat, we're going to type, set it equal to script.parent.parent. .parent. Okay, that's the boat. And then the other thing that we're gonna use just to make it more descriptive is the boat floor, okay? And you could access the boat floor by um, typing boat dot boat floor, but we're just going to save it as a variable just to make it more 
descriptive and just easier to read. And uh, the way that I usually name my variables is you don't use spaces and you just capitalize every word except for the first one. This is called camel case. So boat floor, we're going to set equal to script. Actually, we're going to set equal to boat dot and there it is boat floor. Okay, so instead of typing boat dot boat floor every time, now we can just type this here, boat floor. And you could have called this anything you wanted. We could have called this floor, right? But I, I just want to use something that lets us uh, just kind of really easily see what it is that we're accessing. Okay, so now that we've got these three variables, we can go ahead and type, oh, and we can already make our first change. So right here, you see that we have script.parent. And again, that isn't very descriptive, right? We know that it's the parent of the script, but we don't know what it is. But because script.parent we've set as the variable seat, we can replace this with seat. And there we go. And this is much easier to read. We see that when the seat changes, we call on changed. Okay, so this is one of the benefits of using variables. Uh, the fact that it just makes our code easier to read uh, instead of having script.parents all over the place, we can actually give them names, descriptive names. Okay, so now there's going to be two lines of code, and there's going to be a few things here that um, we haven't seen before. The first one, the easier one, is this body force. And the way that we access body force, let's look here is we go to boat floor and we see that body force is a child of boat floor. So we can just type that here. We can say boat floor dot body force. There it is. Okay, now if we click on body force, we see that it has a force property and that's what we actually wanna change. We wanna change the force property. You can see it right here. And we're gonna go ahead and access that, okay. Now we're going to change this. And here's the first thing that we have not seen before. Um, the direction that we actually want to go forwards and backwards is the direction that we're sitting, right? You want to go forwards the, the, way, the way if you're sitting the way that you're looking backwards, you know, behind you. So the way we access that is we say seat dot C frame and C frame holds the location and the kind of orientation or the angle of our seat. And this lets us access something called a look vector. And the look vector is just looking straight forward from the seated position. Okay. So that's our direction. And we want we want to actually multiply this by something. We want to multiply this by um, 3000 and this number 3000, you can change it. The, the bigger your boat is, um, the bigger of a force you'll need. But for now, we'll just leave it at 3000. That seems to be a good value. And then we want to multiply by basically this on changed function um, accesses the seat, uh, a couple of properties of the seat. And the one we want to put here is the seat dot throttle. And throttle is basically whenever we press forwards or backwards with WS or with the up down keys. Okay, so this line here, this will let us, this will let us go forwards and backwards. And we can actually test it right now. So let's go ahead and test it. So right now what we're doing is we're changing the force property on the body force of our boat floor. And we're going in the direction that we're seated. And we do this anytime the seat, anytime we press up and down or WS. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's make sure this part works. Oh, and when you're doing this, it's a good idea to turn on your output window in case there are any errors, any script errors. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So, oh, it works immediately. So if I push up, I move forward. If I push down, I move backwards. And also with W, if I push W, I move forwards. And if I push S, I move backwards. And then if I try turning, it doesn't do anything. So I'm pressing A and D, nothing. If I push left arrow, right arrow, nothing. And at least the body force is working. And you can see we even get a nice little speedometer down here that tells us our speed. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop this and let's add one more line of code. So we've added forwards and backwards. Now we want to add sideways or turning or steering. And the way we do that is we access this angular velocity property. Okay, and so how do we access the angular velocity property? Well, we have a variable for the boat floor, so let's use that. 
and then we use the dot to access the properties and the one we want is angular velocity we type or click on that one and then let's look inside of angular velocity there's actually a angular velocity property and so this is kind of confusing right because you have to access this angular velocity but then when you click on it there's another angular velocity so we have two of them okay so let's go click on them so there's two angular velocities and then we set this equal to something called a vector and if you look here under angular velocity, you see it has three values, x, y, and z. Well, that's a vector. Anything with three parts is, is a vector. So we're going to type here, the way we show that, or the way we type that in Roblox is with vector three. You can click on that and press enter. And then you create a new one. We're going to create a new vector. And now this thing has three parts. So we're going to say zero comma something comma zero. And we're just going to change the y. And the y is the value here in the middle. And what we want to change it to is, uh, let me see, we're going to need a minus one, and I'll, I'll show you why that's important. Minus one times uh, seat dot steer. There it is. And that's it. So we've got the turning now. And we need this minus one because we want it to match, right? When we press the left arrow, we want it to turn to the left. When we press the right arrow, we want it to turn to the right. And if we don't have this minus one in here, if we just had seat.steer, this would actually go backwards. When we press the left arrow, it would move to the right. And when we press the right arrow, it would move to the left. And so we just need to multiply by a negative one. Okay, now this should, this should turn. So let's test it. Let's go ahead and press play. And let's make sure that our boat moves the way we want it to. Let's see that it goes goes forwards and backwards and steers. Let's see. Okay, so forwards, backwards, steers. Ah, look at that. I'm pressing the left arrow and I am steering. I'm pressing the right arrow and steering. Going forwards, going backwards. And you can actually press more than one button. So if I press forwards and left, I'm going to kind of move at an angle. So you can hold the forward button and then just steer with the side buttons. And you can see my little boat starting to wobble a little bit. And that's okay. Okay, so we've we've actually accomplished. <laughs> and you can actually flip these over. Um, and you can drive them off the edge of the water. Let me show you that before we go. Yeah. And if that happens, you've lost your boat. We would have to um, get a new one. Okay, go ahead and press stop. And let me just show you what we've done. So we created a boat. And we added a few things. We added this angular velocity to turn. We added a body force to move forwards and backwards. We had an attachment just to uh, connect it. And we had a script that we attached to our vehicle seat in order to control or access this uh, vehicle seat whenever we press these buttons. And so again, this vehicle seat lets us have events that respond to keyboard presses, right? Key presses. So if we press the arrow keys, it does something. If we press WASD, it does something. And we access it using seat.steer for sideways or turning and seat.throttle for uh, forwards and backwards. Okay. And we had a framework where we have our, our seat and the changed event, and we connected a function to it. We called that function on changed. And then we had two lines of code, one for steering and one for moving forwards and backwards. And then to make this nice and neat, so you can see here I've got the seat, I've got the seat, i got the seat. It's easy to see where we're using it. Here we've got the boat floor in order to access the angular velocity and body force parts. And we use three variables in order to do that. So we didn't have to do this. Instead of you know using boat floor variable, we could have had script dot parent dot parent dot boat floor and this would have been pretty messy but using these variables just makes it easier to read and just less typing okay so this is all I wanted to do for this first one and you could make multiples of these and test them you can work with the terrain editor to make a more interesting course and we will do that in future lessons but for now this is all of lesson one